Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Blind Strains and Comic Books channel. My name is Matt, and today we're going to review Rogues number one. But before we get into that, if you guys wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing, commenting, it really helps me out. It lets me know what you guys want to see more of. So with that being said, let's just get into it. All right, we got the cover here for Rogues number one. It is a DC Black Label comic. It is by Williamson, Leo Max, and Lopez. And we start off here in a bar, and it's like a place for all the rogues to meet up and hang out and blow off steam. We see at the bar, there is the bartender and this ape fellow who was very sad because his girlfriend left him. And as the ape fellow's talking, Captain Cold comes up and orders some drinks, and this other guy comes up and starts bothering the ape. He mistakes him for Gorilla Garad, and he goes off on how... If he was Gorilla Grodd, he'd be rich because there's a bunch of gold under Gorilla City. And as he gets his drinks, Captain Cold hears this breakdown of how much gold is actually underneath Gorilla City. And as Captain Cold walks back to his table, the gorilla gets mad at the guy that keeps pestering him and starts a fight. But Cold is not very interested in the fight. He's thinking about all that gold underneath Gorilla City. Then we cut to 10 years later, and we see that Captain Cold is living in a mobile home underneath a bridge in possibly a landfill area. And he gets a surprise visit from his parole officer who doesn't show him any respect and treats him like a joke. And then once the parole officer leaves, we get to see a day in the life of Leonard Schnart, Captain Cold. He takes a bus to a box factory where he works. And while he's at work, he gets called into the office and he thinks he's gonna get fired, but they actually give him a promotion. And in his mind, he's kind of thinking, you know, maybe things are gonna be okay. But as he's walking out, he kind of stops on the stairs for a second and he hears the managers talking about him, once again, showing him no respect, making a joke of him. And he goes home and he freaks out. We saw earlier that the parole officer did go through his house looking for any Captain Cold stuff because he's not supposed to have anything. But we find out that behind the refrigerator, he has a package taped up and he pours all the stuff out and begins to make something. Then we cut to a woman who is Captain Cold's sister and she is no longer in crime either. She is a social services worker. So she's helping people and has a fairly fulfilling life, but it's hard on her. And Captain Cold shows up and is able to talk her into joining him for a job. And then we get the introduction of the rest of the team. So he goes through his roster of friends from back in the day, and he basically picks out a team to do this job that he thought of. So we start off with him getting the Trickster, and then he gets Bronze Tiger, Magneta, and Heatwave. And all of them are in various states of either rehab or still committing crimes, but on a lower level. But they all meet up in an abandoned warehouse to hear this job, this plan that Captain Cold has come up with. And basically what he explains is that he's been stewing on the idea of robbing Gorilla City ever since he heard about the gold underneath. He says he has the plan all worked out, that it's basically foolproof, but he only needs one more person in the group and they have to break him out tonight. And that person is Mirror Master. So the team breaks into what they think is a prison facility, but it's actually a rehab center. But Mirror Master is not really of full faculties right now. But they need him anyway. He's essential for the plan. So they have to get him out. And as they're breaking him out, the alarm sounds and they are confronted by the police, police inside and police outside. And that's where I'm going to stop it. I don't want to spoil this comic anymore. It's a cool idea. It's kind of like Old Man Logan where these villains have gone past their prime, but they want to do one last job. I thought the writing was really fun. Williamson did a good job like explaining everybody and setting up the heist and what was going to happen. The only thing I wasn't really sold on in this issue was the format of it is very formulaic as far as heist movies or media goes. It's very Ocean's Eleven or The Italian Job. But Williamson still makes it fun. He plays with the different characters and where they're at in their lives. So that kind of makes it more entertaining. But it is a little bit by the numbers in the presentation of it. And the art was good too, it was solid. Although the cover is a different artist and that artist has a completely different style. So you might be thrown off when you look at the cover and then you open it and see what the interior art is. But overall, this was a really solid comic. So I'm gonna give this one a 3.5. And if you saw anything you like, definitely go pick it up at your local comic book store and we will see you all in the next one.